even if it's not, dude, how many guys on gear do you know who look like this? Like, fucking none, dude, pretty much. Like, this guy is absolutely next level shit. And his legs definitely are uh, superior to Arnold's, you know? He often gets compared to him. And for a 19-year-old at the time of this photo, when you compare him to 19-year-old Arnold, frankly, this guy shits it on What's up guys, Derek from our place from .com. Today we are going to be talking about Paul Unterleitner, Oak 2.0. So, um, is this the uh, Austria flag? I am not even sure. Let me uh, double check that. I would assume it is indeed, what the fuck is this? Uh, <laughs> am I gonna be able to, I thought I could just Google this fucking easily and find it. I'm assuming it is what flag is this flag for austria okay gotcha just want to fucking double check that my geography was not that idiotic and i assumed when it said oak it was austrian but anyways besides that we have paul unterleitner the austrian oak 2.0 which you know is very fitting when you actually look at his physique he looks like a spinning image of young arnold especially with some of his muscle insertions you know maybe his chest isn't as genetically blessed or his arms as genetically blessed, but they're pretty fucking good, dude. And his physique all around, like his legs, definitely better than Arnold's were. And um, when you compare them at similar ages, like this guy is, uh, well, I guess now that he is 21, you might be able to say Arnold was starting to blow him out of the water a bit, but up until, you know, 20 years old, Paul was basically like beating Arnold, to be honest. And it's honestly, when we're doing this natty or not, they're going to be a good comparison as a reference point against one another because they have very similar body compositions. And frankly, I'm sure a lot of people compare them against each other all the time. Hence the fucking nickname, Austrian Oak 2.0. So anyways, this guy is 21 years old. He is a natural pro bodybuilder, vegan. He's been training since 2015. So only, you know, six years of training or, you know, five and a half, whatever the fuck. He is a YouTuber. Now his statistics in particular, 192 centimeters. So this is notable because this is actually taller than Arnold. And obviously there's some uh, um, misconceptions about Ar Arnold's height. Some people think he was uh, height frauding and shit like that. So I, I don't know how tall Arnold was for certain, but 192 centimeters is six foot three and a half. To be exact, it is six foot three point five nine inches so six foot three point six so pretty fucking tall and when you look at his weight he is uh 109 kilograms which is 240 pounds just double checking that yes indeed 109 kilograms is 240.3 pounds so the guy is six foot three and a half 240 pounds as of his most recent biography update and uh these are these are some of the uh his picks dude you know, looking pretty fucking solid. Um, he's literally out here. I don't even want to try and say the fucking caption. I wish there was an auto translate going. It seems like YouTube has auto translate, but Instagram on desktop does not seem to have that. So it makes it a very difficult video to do when I actually can't understand a lick of what this guy's fucking saying in any of his videos. The guy does not speak English at all and his captions are not in English. So we end up with shit like this where he has natural status in danger do i go big on the do i go on the big stage so like calling this is like fairly recent too he's basically still claiming natural and saying if he wants to go be an ifbb pro should he you know take fucking gear and youtube auto translates for me and uh some of the stuff is funny in here dude like he has the pin comment what do you think i would have a chance on the ifbb stage without helping out <laughs> Classic physique. Um, Paul won't win a flower pot on an IFPB stage. Due to his size, there will likely be people standing next to him who are one, two heads smaller and are just as heavy. Just as heavy. Um, let's see. Like, I don't even know if I should take these comments seriously because this is like auto-translated. Like, would be extremely interesting to see what would go with, with fabric or how much, how much potential is still there. Definitely. It's just a question of whether it is worth it. So obviously, you know, the guy is 
kind of conversing with his followers. Should he take gear? You know, should he take the plunge as if, you know, he hasn't already done it and um, just do the Natty Olympia again and the Natty World Championship. And then we'll see. I would wish would either get everything out of the natural associations or start with material at the IFBB. You have so great potential. You would use it immediately and not start with material <laughs> in 10 years. This is a new word for gear, guys. Material and fabric. Are you on the fucking fabric, bro? Because you don't look natural. So anyways, he, uh, I'm not even going to play the video. Like, what's the fucking point? They're not speaking English, so it would just be me basically, like, reacting to them, speaking a different language. So all we can really do is look at these uh, translated captions and shit. Um, and give you my stance on his physique progression, essentially. As well as his statistics a bit. So... This was him in 2016, 94 kilograms. Um, in 2020, 106.5 kilograms. And um, again, like I said, it's like very reminiscent of Arnold. You know, he has the uh, fucking shelf of the gods. He has the big bulky ass arm. And um, it really shows on stage when he diets down. And I'll show you in a sec. Um, there's a pretty wild video of him at 19 years old getting on stage where he just fucking dwarfs people as a, you know, natural teenager, which is absolutely insane. So anyways, this is another one, 2016. Remember, he started training in 2015, well, according to him at least, and uh, he looked fucking better than most people do, fully trained for their whole lives at 2016, essentially one year into lifting. So we obviously know he had a good baseline, even as a, what, like a 16 year old, essentially. Um, looking better than guys in their 20s who've been training for years. And then by 2020, the guy looks like a fucking beefcake house. The guy is absolutely an upper echelon of genetic superiority over most other people. And um, yeah, like it's not just a matter of is this guy natty or not based on what his physique looks like. You have to look back at him way back at the beginning and be like, is this guy just a fucking outlier who's a freakazoid? Because it's certainly plausible that there are individuals out there who might be able to fall into this camp of individual who is actually 240, you know, like striking distance of 10% body fat and is almost six foot four. Like those statistics aren't like, they're pretty, pretty good, but they're not so extraordinary out of this world that you might not have to fucking think about it a bit for a guy who has like Arnold tier genetics potentially. Now, again, though, when Arnold started steroids, was he telling the truth is also something we're going to get into. One of the things this guy reminded me to Reminded me of too is Callum Von Moger a little bit. And we're going to get into some sort of comparisons between Callum, natural versus not, Arnold when he started his first cycle, and kind of circle it back to this guy. I have a lot of fucking tabs open here, but we will uh, get through it and I'll give you my uh, overall stance and culminate it into something organized by the end. Here he is 2019, 98 kilograms, 2020, 108 kilograms. So obviously, this was like, like honestly, his progression is a little bit more natural looking than. Arnold, for example, which is, you know, the, the main reference point, given that this guy is constantly compared to him and at similar age groups, they look very similar, but this jump dude, 98 kilograms to 108 certainly does, isn't doing him any favors when he's trying to come across as natural. Now, again, I would speculate this is post competition because he looks a bit more not emaciated, but you know what I mean? He looks more like stringed out, you know, like post comp looking. Whereas here, he looks more a bit off-season, even though he has visible abs. So, like, is he gaining fucking, like, just pure lean mass during this year? Because it doesn't look like there's a lot of difference in ab separation. But it's like, I can't tell if the lighting is just less flattering. Because his face does look a lot, does look a lot more sucked down in this one. As if he was just dieted down for a show or something. And he has, you know, some massive cheat meal in front of him. And then here, it looks more like he's, you know, has some mass on his face. A bit less, you know, separation, like and cuts in the arms, but the abs are, you know, fairly similar. So I, it's hard for me to tell just based on this picture exactly what I'm looking at, but he looks, he looks more off season here than the other one, even though they are potentially similar body fat percentages. Like the way he distributes fat is very favorable and it becomes a little bit difficult to gauge shit. But like, obviously when you gain, if you have 20 plus pounds and he still has visible abs, did he gain, you know, pure like fucking over 20 pounds of muscle in a year. Like, no, he didn't. A lot of this is actually fat, water, and muscle. But again, the drastic jump is a little bit suspect, and it's definitely a red flag to keep in mind. Um, it doesn't do him any favors, you know, because this is also how long into lifting, like four years into lifting, all of a sudden you jump 
20 pounds of lean mass in a year. A little bit fucking sketch, dude. So anyways, now we get into him at his last show, as far as I know. As far as I know, this is his last show. Like, this caption might be something about making me incorrect. Like, I don't fucking know, you know? But anyways, this is the last one I could find. I don't even know if this is a throwback, because for me, when I was uh, looking at his competition history, the most recent thing I could find was getting a pro card at 19 in 2019. So is this image a throwback to that competition or is this something he actually did in 2020? I don't know for sure because when you actually go through 2020, he didn't do a competition from what I can tell in November. He was, you know, full blown off season or just, you know, chilling and doing like YouTube style videos with his friends and stuff, doing a fucking <laughs> smasher pass videos and like uh, eating challenges, magic push up challenge. Can you eat? 20 subs in fucking one sitting. Can you, uh, you know, should I take gear? Tell me if I should fucking inject my ass to go compete against Chris Bumstead, like that kind of shit. So anyways, the, uh, this is what he looked like at his competition, which is absolutely ridiculous. If this is indeed natural, he has, even if it's not dude, how many guys on gear do you know who look like this? Like fucking none dude, pretty much. Like this guy is absolutely next level shit and his legs definitely are uh, superior to Arnold's, you know? He often gets compared to him, and for a 19-year-old at the time of this photo, when you compare him to 19-year-old Arnold, frankly, this guy shits on him. And Arnold was unnatural at the time when he was 19, but was still one of, was the fucking best bodybuilder on the planet at the time. So, you know, really the calls into question, because it's like, does this guy just have that much more superior genetics than Arnold Schwarzenegger? I don't fucking know, man. Let's uh, let's find out. So anyways, his league he's competing in is the PNBA. So I went to go look at their drug test protocols and see uh, what they kind of, you know, how intense it is, you know, how what they subject their athletes to. Um, they are WADA compliant. They must be drug free with WADA's anti-doping code. Um, drug testing is indeed randomized to a certain extent. Obviously, they have limitations in terms of budget, what kind of tests they can carry out with that given budget. Um, and I'm sure it's not that stringent, you know, like we've already gone through leagues like this, if not this exact league, I've probably done a video on before in the past and dug into it. But when you actually look at the breakdown of the assays they're using, the things they're testing for, um, the lack of scrutiny when it comes to bioidentical compounds, very easy to get around the shit, but that calls into question too, like how intelligent of an individual do you have in your corner and how connected are you resources wise? Like what is the likelihood that a 18, 19 year old kid is going to have a fucking chemist in his corner who knows what he's doing and is going to help him skirt around this shit, you know? And how likely is it that a kid's going to risk his, you know, reputation in order to cheat to get around these tests given if he didn't have the, you know, pharmacology information given to him. Like the likelihood he understands how to beat this shit on his own at that age, extremely low. Like even for me, who like literally researches this shit for fun, I didn't know any of this stuff at 18, 19, you know? It's like, I barely knew it until fucking recently, to be honest. So um, for the, the likelihood he would know how to skirt around this stuff without like significant help and resources is low. And then what's the chances that he has those? And if he doesn't, would he try and skirt around this shit on his own, given the fact that you're going to end up on a hull of shame list if you end up getting caught? You know, it, it's not always just about how easy is it to get around tests if you had like perfect circumstances of like support from like intellectuals and fucking people who will like make gear for you and shit. Um, it also has to do with like how confident you are in your ability to get around the shit. Like how many people who make a living off social media are going to risk being put on the fucking INBA hall of shame just to, you know, win a natural show. I don't know. So, like, that's obviously something that has to be factored into it, too. Now, random testing. How random is it? You know, when you do get tested, how meticulously do they observe you? You know, do they fucking stare at your dick while you're pissing in the cup? You know, how strict is it? I don't know for certain. All I can say is I know for a fact that you can get around the shit if you really wanted to, you know, to some extent. With him, though, I don't have enough context on what kind of, like, we're just ballpark speculating how connected this guy is, how far he would go to skirt these tests. All I can tell you is that you really could if you really wanted to. So anyways, is he going to be doing that? You know, tough to say, especially at that age, you know? 
So anyways, getting to his YouTube, he is like a, it's interesting. He's like a fitness YouTuber, YouTuber. Like he actually posts shit that's about, uh, you know, he, he gets the clickbait in there. He does the, uh, you know, the challenges and shit. Like it looks like here he's using a, uh, one of those like stimulator things for, you know, injury recovery, potentially, um, something about, um, I could have sworn I had this translated into English like two seconds ago. It was like, why am I, why can't I fall in love or some shit? Um, it's like weird. It's like my computer like picks and chooses when it translates shit. So it's kind of problematic. Um, Stehen Frauen auf disease. Beast. Flex. Heart eyes. I'm not even going to pretend I know what the fuck's going on in any of this stuff. But a lot of this stuff is about him being natural. About him, you know, doing challenges. Stuff like that. And the most recent notable one that I could find. Well, first of all, let's look at his competition again. You saw some of the pictures just to show you how impressive it is in real time not just, you know, potentially touched up photos and whatnot. This is him standing in the lineup and, um, you know, the front relaxed pose. To me, it looks pretty clear how much he's smoking the other guys already, but then it becomes even more apparent when they get into the actual poses. So here you can see how superior his arms are, how superior pretty much every fucking body part he has is, and he's very reminiscent of old school Arnold. Um, the arms are... Maybe not as full, chest not as full, but to be honest, he's more well-balanced in my opinion and proportional. And I think he has more potential in general. Like even his fucking, literally every body part he has is just way more balanced. And the overall look is just better. His abs are better too. And he ends up winning the show as far as I, yeah, he ends up winning the show. And um, I think he weighed around like 212 at this show, if I recall correctly, when I was digging through some of these statistics and whatnot. Which, uh, 212 at six foot three and a half, you know, stage ready for a guy who's like a genetic hyper elite. Is that realistic naturally? You know, it certainly could be, you know, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. Um, here he is, you know, talking about his win and stuff. And, uh, some of the pictures are very, very impressive from that show. So, you know, this is the, uh, you know, him backstage flexing, just the fucking deep shredded ab cuts, got the traps climbing, 3D delts. Um, here he is in the, uh, tan thing, flashing a fucking huge grin, like the Joker. Um, going to, let's see, this is the same video I was just playing. Here's him getting interviewed. And, um, yeah, here's a close up. You can see kind of his, uh, you know, inserts, you know, his chest and arms, obviously very uh, reminiscent of Arnold. Now, one thing I wanted to do is I was interested in his FFMI. This is something that, you know, used to be do, done in some of the like old school Natty or Nots. Uh, not old school, but just like, you know, the first, when Natty or Not sort of came on the scene, that was one of the metrics people used to gauge what is the likelihood that this individual could be within, you know, like physiologic parameters for a natural person, which um, doesn't, you know, it's often just like a ballpark estimate again, but it's still useful data nonetheless, given the fact that I can't even fucking understand this guy when he talks, read his titles or listen to anything he fucking says. So anyways, I plugged in his statistics and we got, you know, six foot 3.59 was his actual like exact height, 240 pounds. I ballparked his body fat percentage at 12%. Now you guys can probably correct me if you think I'm wrong on that, but this is, I'm assuming he's basing his body fat percentage on like these kind of photos where he's just like walking around rather than, it's not stage weight, obviously a stage weight to you. In the, uh, you know, like 212 was the last one that I could find. So I'm assuming this is around here and I'm just ballparking him at 12%. Um, you know, I might be wrong on that. Let me know if you guys think differently, but he's definitely like, you know, striking distance of single digits and 12 might even be undershooting him a bit. Um, he might be uh, better than that. I don't know for sure, but this is like, like worst case scenario, this guy's got an FFMI of almost 26, which, you know, by FM, FFMI chart standards is like right on the brink of there's almost no, like no scenario in which you are natural and you're like a genetic fucking hyper elite. But again, we already know he's a genetic hyper elite because guys on gear don't even look like this. So does the FFMI really tell us anything? Well, it's not fucking 30. So I guess, you know, there's it's not so extreme and obscene that there is not, you know, a debate to be had still. So definitely borderline with this uh, 25.98. And, you know, most people seeing this off the bat would say he's fucking unnatural. Like there's no fucking way you can walk around like this in, uh, you know, by 
laws of <laughs> fucking genetics in humans. Like there's just no way you could end up like this. And you know, I, I'm definitely skeptical. You know, when I see this, I think uh, top 0.000001% human. Um, even if you're on gear, this is like, you know, maybe the actual sheer amount of muscle is not, you know, as impressive as a guy who's like sauced out of his gills, who's an IFBB open pro. But again, most of the guys at your gym who take gear are not going to end up looking like this. So it's still impressive nonetheless. So one thing I wanted to show is Callum when he was natural, because I thought that Callum also had, you know, one of the original guys to get compared to Arnold because, you know, sort of a similar, not, not an identical build necessarily, but like sort of similar enough that it's, they look similar, you know, they're compared and contrasted very often. And Callum has some good footage of him as a natural relative to him when he's sauced out of his fucking mind that we can use as kind of a gauge for what, again, Callum's obviously a genetic hyper elite, as was Arnold. So we can see exactly kind of uh, what to expect from a guy who's like, you know, six foot two plus and um, has to fill out the frame and has kind of the same proportions in certain aspects. So anyways, this was Callum natural at, uh, I don't know if this was his last natural show for certain, but I know this was at least one we definitively know he was natural at rather than the other ones, or at least unless he's like a huge fucking retroactive fake natty, I would speculate that he was telling the truth when he said he was natural at this show. And you look at uh, what he looked like. And again, like obviously a fucking Jack dude, when you're shredded, you can look a lot bigger than you are, even if you're natural. You know, that's a very common thing for people to think, oh, this guy has, you know, shredded abs. He's fucking diced to the socks. He must be on gear. When I think this looks reasonably achievably naturally for, you know, somebody with great, great genetics. So this was him. And the big jump for Callum obviously gives it away in terms of when he got on the sauce train. Whereas for Paul, it's a bit less obvious, which is, again, sort of why we use this as a reference point to go off of. So this was him in 2014. And all of a sudden, the guy clearly night and day fucking difference. The guy's packed on what appears to be 25 to 30 pounds since the first, since the last show we were just looking at. Like this was him in 2011 and then him in 2014. So obviously night and day and the guy is by 2014, almost at, you know, the peak size that we've seen, that we've seen him at historically before he had all the injuries and stuff like that. Like he obviously just exploded going into uh, um, this universe. So, um, and I know the motivation for him to do that was he really wanted, it's kind of funny because his motivation was similar to Arnold. You know, they wanted to win the universe. They couldn't do it against guys who were bigger than them. So they fucking sauced it up and then ended up winning, you know, because they have the genetics that edge out everyone else when they're also on the same gear. So Arnold now, looking at Arnold, his first cycle ever, when was it exactly? I actually did an article on this a while ago and I totally forgot. This was on my site, I wrote it a while ago, Arnold Schwarzenegger steroid cycle, D-Bull and Prima Bull, and I kind of outline what he, uh, what he used. You know, it's actually pretty easy to find out uh, based on some of his own, you know, his autobiography, total, total recall, he gives some insight. And there's a lot of, you know, anecdotal, re anecdotal reports from golden era guys over the years. But notably in his book, he talks about his first cycle ever at supposedly 20 years old or, you know, 19, depending on when it occurred, it might've been 19, but it was in 1967 and he was born in 1947, I believe. So he talked about how he heard that uh, steroids were, uh, you know, being used and he asked his doctor if he could try them. Doctor prescribed him an injection every two weeks and pills to take in between. You know, presumably this was Diana Bull and Prima Bull, and I'm almost certain, if I recall correctly, that was what was uh, in place for that cycle. Now, again, this is him saying he started it for the 1967 show because he wanted to win the 1967 show. But when you go look at his contest history, he came in second to Chet Yorton in 1966. If you go look at him in 1966, this is what he looked like at age 19. This is him beside Serge Nubre, age 28. Arnold is 19 years old here, 1966. So again, when you compare 19-year-old Arnold to 19-year-old Paul, whatever his last name is, I'm not gonna fucking say it properly, you know, who is more impressive? You know, I would say fucking Paul, to be honest. Now, granted, obviously, Arnold is in, in stage-ready shape here, but even when he showed up for competition around the same age as Paul, didn't look as good, necessarily. This was him in uh, 1965 at age, um, I guess, 18. Um, and then this was him at age 19, again with Surge. 
And then he came in second during that year to, um, to uh, Chet. And then he wanted to step it up, supposedly. So then he sauced for uh, the Mr. Universe Amateur in 1967. And then he ended up winning it. And this was him in the universe looking blatantly much bigger. So, you know, was he telling the truth when he says he sauced it up for this show and this was the first time he touched presumably Diana Bull and Prima Bull? And it's hard to say, man, because a lot of the feedback over the years is that Arnold was actually on the fucking sauce train as early as this 1965 shot here. Apparently at age 17, he was already using Diana Bull tabs in Germany. And then when he moved over to the States, he was... Um, switch to you know actual injections of uh, pharmaceuticals and whatnot obviously he was using the uh, pharmaceutical grade diana ball tabs too but i mean he started to implement actual oil-based compounds into his regimens as opposed to just leveraging you know cycles of d-ball so is that true or is it not i don't know for certain but what i can say is the jump that arnold had between 65 66 and 67 was substantial enough that obviously something really really big changed and um, was it just the implementation of a you know DHT derivative on top of his Diana ball? Tough to say for certain, you know. You know, like does he have a huge reason to be like again? Is Arnold a retroactive fake natty too? Did he start taking Diana ball in 1960 at at 17 years old and he just wants me, people to think he's more responsible than he was? Certainly possible as well. But what we can say for certain is that at you know 19 years old. Going to 20 years old, Arnold definitely, uh, you know, started to blow up to the point that he started to overtake Paul, in my opinion. Now, at 19 years old, I don't think they were wildly different. I think that once Arnold really stepped on the gas, though, and started to crank it up a bit, like even here, this is supposedly him at 20 years old. He does not look better than Paul at all. He's way fucking softer. His legs are, you know, trash in comparison. Okay, I'm being too harsh, but I'm just saying, like, you know, compare them side by side. Obviously, Paul is a... Uh, the superior physique and would beat him at a show. Arnold has a bit better arms, a bit better chest, but the uh, you know body composition is not nearly as lean and uh, not nearly as balanced. But then getting to 21 years old, Arnold really you know steps it up a bit, starts cranking his fucking face off, and then he becomes the Arnold we all uh, you know know and love. The guy who has some of the most like you know iconic fucking shots, and uh, he starts you know cranking out Olympia wins at this point. So. Anyways, when you circle back to Paul, is it feasibly, you know, is it possible that he was natural during those, those shows, you know, given the fact that Arnold was, uh, what was his stage weight, like 230 or 240 or something like that at six foot two, approximately, and then Paul is stepping on stage at like 212 at six foot three and a half, and obviously it's a genetic hyper elite. Is it possible that he was natural? Yeah, I think it's actually possible. I think the guy is, uh, it's actually com easily comparable physique at least you know on paper i can't think of somebody better to compare him to and when you look at these jumps historically with arnold you can kind of gauge where probably the sauce was really implemented heavily and when he took his physique to the next level and all of a sudden overtook a guy who otherwise had a superior physique year after year like i'll be honest the progress naturally of paul assuming he's natural from like 16 to 19 was superior than Arnold's from 16 to 19, in my opinion, or at least fucking on par, you know, at worst. So anyways, I think Paul, to be honest, when it comes down to it and you look at his physique over the years, you scroll through his Instagram, you scroll through his videos, he hasn't made nearly as much progress in the last couple of years as Arnold did, you know, post 19 years old. Like it's almost like he's starting to stagnate a bit and it sort of calls into question, is this guy actually, you know, hop, how hard is he cranking? You know, is he cranking at all? Has he just, you know, plateaued after his initial, you know, burst of gains during that first, you know, three to four years. And now he's kind of just like, you know, slowly chipping away and gaining a few pounds of lean mass at best per year. Um, certainly possible. On the other hand, his statistics are also fucking mental and he looks absolutely insane. And he did gain that, you know, jump in 10 pounds or what was it? 20 plus pounds in lean mass between his last competition or, you know, presumably his last competition and 2020. There's a lot of red flags, dude, you know? And when it comes to the physique, again, can we have somebody who's on, like, would step on stage against Arnold and beat him, who was, like, the best fucking physique in Austria at the time, even as a natural, or, you know, what he claims was natural, and have this guy beat him? You know, <laughs> it's a bit up in the air because all these guys are fucking lying about everything. Like, even Arnold, it's, like, hard to take him for his word when he says he started taking Diana Bull. So, for me... I would speculate that Paul was has extremely great genetics, 
I do think there's a small chance that the guy has been natural, you know, up until his show and whatever. But I would not be surprised if the guy has dabbled. You know, I don't think he's really like pushed the limits of gear. I don't think he has really gone way out of his way to crank his fucking socks off. But I do think there is definitely a high possibility the guy has dabbled. I don't think it's to the point where there's a blatant jump in his physique necessarily. You know, despite the supposed 20 pound lean mass claim in that one year, when you go through his Instagram, like the guy has looked fairly consistently similar from, you know, like 19 to current. The guy's physique hasn't taken such a drastic jump that you're like, okay, like this guy definitely is on the sauce, like at this point. Whereas for Arnold and for Callum, maybe Callum more obviously, you can see like a blatant, like fucking hyper acceleration of their, of their progress, even after lifting for a few years. So I don't know with Paul, it looks like the most progress was made in the first few years. And then he kind of plateaus thereafter. Whereas the other guys, they make a decent amount of progress and then they make a fuck ton of progress. So I don't know. I think the guy, again, like I said, the likelihood is, uh, it's certainly plausible that he might be the 0.00001% that might be a natural, absolute fucking freak. You know, but again, comparing him to Arnold, who's also a 0.0001% freak and was the best bodybuilder on the planet. And we're saying that Paul somehow be has better genetics than Arnold. I don't know. Like, how likely is that? You know, I say I'd say it would it would not be far fetched to think this guy has dabbled. But um, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe. Check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at more place, more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitsuit, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below my TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas that design myself from scratch and anything else I'm associated with. It's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.